It's been ages since Six Flags Great Adventures added a significant ground up roller coaster. In fact, in my opinion, the last influential coaster that this park received that wasn't a clone or relocation was El Toro in 2006, which is considered to be one of the best roller coasters of all time. I said roller coaster. That wait was extended even longer than expected. Jersey Devil Coaster was announced on August 29, 2019 as the first custom RMC Raptor to ever come to a park. Construction then ensued throughout the following winter, but as you all know by now, the COVID-19 pandemic screwed everything up and the coaster was delayed until 2021. Now, it's June 2021. Jersey Devil Coaster is set to open June 9th, June 11th, and June 12th for members and pass holders and June 10th for Media Day. The official grant opening will be June 13th, but since I'm not cool enough to be attending... Loser! You're a loser! Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Well, you should be because you are dirt! I'll be watching the reviews come in this week on the sidelines. However, there's been a lot of concern rising in the coaster community lately about the pacing of Jersey Devil, especially with the coaster valleying recently in some cold weather. And obviously the concern rising that the coaster won't be as good as we expected it to be when it was first announced. Today I'll be telling you what to expect on Jersey Devil Coaster when you get the chance to ride it. If you're watching this like a day after it comes out, then people have probably already rode this coaster. In fact, as I'm making this, there has been some commercial shooting that has been done on the coaster, so you may have already rode it. I just wanted to throw that out there. But anyways, I'll be giving my take on the pacing debate today, and this has surprisingly become a hot topic after we saw some of the first test runs for the coaster. Also, if you just clicked on the video and are already typing up a storm in the comments because you're assuming I'm going to say that I think Jersey Devil has pacing issues and I'm a bad YouTuber, well, then you're not very good at reading because there clearly is a question mark after the words pacing issues. I even put three question marks for those of you who needed some reinforcement. If you see anyone in the comments who clearly didn't watch the whole video, you have my permission to laugh at them. But if you do a legitimate take after watching the whole video, feel free to 100% tell me your opinion whether we disagree agree or not and if you've already rode the coaster i'd love to hear what you think of it and how it compares to my thoughts before riding it so make sure to put all those thoughts down in the comments below but anyways really quickly before we hop into the video make sure to give this video a like as it really helps us out against the youtube algorithm and subscribe if you're new here for more awesome coaster content but with all that being said this intro is taking way too long so let's hop into the video As we all know from Six Flags' fancy advertisements, Jersey Devil Coaster will be the tallest, fastest, and longest single rail roller coaster in the world. Jersey Devil will reach a maximum height of 130 feet, hit speeds of 58 miles per hour, and will have a very specific length of 3,000 feet. A couple of other important stats are that the drop of an angle of descent of 87 degrees, so not quite vertical, but it won't really feel like much of a difference from a drop that would be vertical. And the coaster will feature three inversions, which we'll talk about a little more when we get into the detailed analysis of the actual layout. This coaster will also have four 12 car trains opposed to the standard eight car trains on the original Raptor clones and the 10 car trains on the new stunt pilot at Silverwood. This coaster is also confirmed to a moving loading station like the other Raptors as well. This should help to increase capacity as Six Flags Great Adventure is one of the most visited parks in the Six Flags chain. First off, Six Flags Great Adventure did a very nice job cleaning up this area around the coaster. I wasn't a fan of this old rundown area of the park over by Nitro and the Kitty area before, but now it looks very modern and has some nice decor, including the El Diablo statue that was moved from the park's former Super Loop. The sign also looks sweet and helps to add a little character to the ride. Another cool touch to the ride is those awesome trains. Imagine sitting in line just staring at the ride and you see a malevolent devil face coaster train racing right toward you. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I used to be into the paranormal kind of stuff like this when I was a little bit younger, so this is honestly a pretty cool theme. Anyways, let's get to the ride. First off, you go up a fairly fast and loud 130 foot lift hill. This coaster absolutely hauls up the lift once the next train hits the mid-course brake run. 
you'll then crest the 122 foot drop, which I think the experience will vary based on where you sit. If you are in the front of the train, you should get a nice pop of ejector airtime, but if you're closer to the back, you'll get pulled over the drop and experience more sustained ejector airtime. After that, you'll go into what Six Flags has dubbed the Raven Dive. This element is very similar to a dive loop with the only difference being it starts out as an airtime moment and that quickly switches to an inversion. You should get a little airtime as you come into this inversion and even more sustained airtime in the back. You'll be sharply snapped out of the airtime moment and pulled through the inversion. You then will hit a massive airtime hill which should be one of the best airtime moments on the ride. The train appears to have some good speed coming into this hill and it should give everyone on the train some ejector airtime. You then hit a 0G stall which should give you a fun hang time sensation and be a bit disorienting. You'll then haul into a very tight turnaround called the crow's nest which should be very intense as the train should haul through this moment on the way out of the turnaround it should give a great pop of airtime in the back of the train in a little bit for the front as well. The next element is the final inversion which is a 0g roll. This element looks fine, it should give a little sense of weightlessness and be a bit disorienting. Riders sitting in the back of the train should experience some whip as the train exits the roll. The front of the train should get a nice pop of airtime as the train hits the mid course brake run. Many people weren't too happy when they saw this in the layout, but it's there to increase capacity and give everyone another chance to get some airtime. It does slow down the train a decent amount, but this will create a good airtime moment dropping off the mid-course brake run for riders sitting toward the back of the train. The train then goes through what should be a very intense and forceful turn as the train starts making its way back toward the station. You'll then go through two consecutive off-access airtime hills that the train can go through quite fast or a little bit slower, depending on how fast the coaster is running, and that will decide how much airtime and what kind of airtime you'll get on these hills. However, you should expect to at least get a short pop of airtime like on the other RMCs on these moments. Also, the final hill should feel very similar, just it'll be more traditional airtime than the off-axis hills will give. The front of the train should also get a little pop of airtime as the train pops up into the brake run. This will be the conclusion of your ride experience on Jersey Devil. Now, let's get to some more topics that will help determine if the ride is successful or not, at least in the minds of enthusiasts. The most important factor in determining how high this coaster will rank on people's lists is probably how the ride is paced. The prototype RMC Raptors are known for their insane pacing and intensity which seems to drive those coasters up people's lists, but Jersey Devil will likely feel a tad bit different. The reason those prototype Raptors are paced so well is because of how compact they are. Jersey Devil is obviously not that compact. Well, at least compared to the other Raptors, that is. I think the pacing of this coaster will depend on a few things. First, the weather. Jersey Devil actually valleyed in some cooler weather, so that obviously shows that it could have some issues in cooler temperatures. Obviously, things like weight of the trains and the wheels can be changed to help avoid that from ever happening with riders on it, but it still shows how slow the ride can go in cooler weather. But when it's 90 degrees out, it'll do a lot better. Also, Steel Curtain Valley a few weeks before I rode it, and that coaster was doing just fine. Secondly, I think certain elements will be taken a lot faster than others. Like I said earlier, these single rail coasters seem to go faster when they are in more compact spaces, so I think those turnarounds will be very well paced, but other elements like the inversions aren't as compact, so they slow the train down. Third, how hard the mid course is hitting. In some of the footage we have, it looks like the mid course hits a bit harder than we would like it to. I think the way the ending of the ride will go will all depend on how hard those brakes hit. Another thing I wanted to point out is that I think people need to stop overreacting to the early testing footage. A lot of people were mad about the pacing of the ride's first test run, but guys, it was the first test run. It's not going to be anywhere near full speed on a prime day. Also, just because it ran bad the first time it was in cold weather doesn't mean it'll always be that way. This coaster wasn't necessarily meant to have crazy pacing like the other Raptors. It was meant to be more enjoyable for the general public, which I think a ride should do. Also, a ride like Wicked Cyclone has weaker pacing toward the end of the ride, and that ride is still highly praised among the smaller RMCs. 
This will not be a bad ride. Will it be a weaker RMC? Maybe, but that's all yet to be seen. And it will be completely based on your opinion. To conclude, I think the pacing of this coaster will vary from element to element and vary from day to day. However, I don't think this coaster will have serious pacing issues. Ah yes, the only question that truly matters, will Jersey Devil be the best RMC Raptor and or the best coaster in the park? This is another subjective question. I think if you enjoy more intense and fast paced rides, you'll probably prefer the other Raptors over Jersey Devil. If you like more drawn out elements and more sustained airtime moments in a longer ride and more whip, you'll probably like Jersey Devil more. I think it'll sort of be a similar deal with it being the best in the park. I think most people will prefer El Toro just based on the intensity of those four really good airtime moments and the overall ride experience. However, this should be smoother and more enjoyable for the GP and even for some enthusiasts. I definitely would leave the door open for this coaster potentially being the best in the park or maybe not even being top 3 at all for any given person. Great Adventure has a nice variety of coasters and some people could prefer one ride over another for a different reason. I think it'll all just come down to preference at the end of the day. To wrap this up, will Dirty Devil be a good addition? Without a doubt. Great Adventure really needed something like this for a long time. And this should do wonders to help diversify their lineup. I think this coach will be more GP friendly than the other Raptors, which is a win for the park. Also, remember, this is RMC we're talking about, and the vast majority of people think they haven't made a bad ride yet, so I can't see this being anything but a success for the park and a fun ride. I'm definitely really excited for this coaster, and I hope you are too. If you have already rode it, make sure to tell me what you think of it down in the comments below. If you haven't rode it yet, make sure to tell me what you think it'll be like when you get the chance to ride it. Do you agree with me or do you have a different opinion? Make sure to tell me that in the comments as well. If you enjoyed this analysis style video, make sure to tell me that as well and show your support by leaving a like on this video and subscribing if you're new here. Now with all that being said, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.